Welcome back to the Nullified Take here on YouTube, where we've got the TNT takes for you on yet another reality TV show. It's been the season of Traitors 2023, and it sounds like we're going to be finishing this year very strongly with more information coming our way about Traitors USA Season 2. That's right, baby. We've got spoiler accounts on the loose. Uh, a certain couple of spoiler accounts that normally spoil challenge cast members have come out and have started spoiling traitors to the point where Peacock now has officially released the cast as well um, because I think the cat was out of the bag. But I brought in two people here with me that you are all very familiar with, Kahuna and Maki, who have both been covering traitors with me this year. So obviously Kahuna covered Traders Australia with me and Maki is our Traders specialist because he did both Traders New Zealand and Traders Australia and very soon we'll be hosting Traders Canada here on the channel. Maki, uh, it sounds like I'm going to be working you over time in the next coming months because it's Traders galore, buddy. Well, what can I say? The hustle don't stop, baby. You know, your number one <laughs> Traders specialist is here to do all the hard work once again for, for Chris. You know, Chris, you're mm. like the the poster boy, you know, you're like on it. every podcast, you know, you're looking all glamorous and sexy, but I'm the hardworking oh. uh, hustler, you know, behind the scenes doing everything for you. But now I can finally take some credit and, you know, officially start turning the nullified take into the mucky take, you know, mm. so. As long as you don't I muck mean, up the take, then I'm okay <laughs> with it. <laughs> yeah, we've had a lot of mucky takes throughout the history. <laughs> Yeah, there's been there's been some interesting takes, but I'm I'm really interested to know who Maki is gonna look forward to seeing on this season because Kahuna, I brought you on because I think between the two of us, we probably cover the widest range of shows in the US and we've got a bit of an idea of some of these players that are coming in. And this cast, I have to say, uh looks like a very heavy hitting cast. I even said on Twitter, maybe one of the most heavy hitting casts that we've seen since Winners at War and Survivor. Yeah, they went down the all-star path. They they got rid of normal people altogether. It's not just a few celebrities. Mm. They're going hardcore, 100%. We want all celebrity all the time. And they they went hard. They picked a very, very strong cast. Maybe like potentially a little bit too much. If, if, they're, if they're shooting all their bullets in this season, where do you go for upcoming seasons? Which is going to be an interesting you know choice they have coming up. I think there are still some people left on the cutting board or cutting floor when you're looking at certain players in the Big Brother era. Like they, They've they got the goat from Big Brother, arguably the goat from Big Brother on this season, and we'll talk about him very soon. But they've also got two of the goats from the challenge, arguably the two goats from the challenge. They've got two legends from Survivor playing the game. One legend was rumored to be on the show, and that was Boston Rob. Myself and Kahuna actually spoke about this prior to hitting record today. And Mucky, what do you think about Boston Rob not making the final cut, not being good enough to get on the show? What does that say uh, about the rest of the cast? How heavy hitting they are? Yeah, um, the, the other males on the cast must be, you know, pretty massive for them to cut Boston Rob off. You know, he's a great poker player, great survivor player, probably one of the most dominant uh, survivor players in the US, but that's obviously you know, debatable. And yeah, now I was I was a bit sad to see that he was rumored on the cast, but then he was not on the official cast mm -hmm. because I feel like having him, Parvati, and Sandra, um, they would have been the perfect original traders. It would have been obvious mm -hmm. that they were traders. But I feel like each of them bring so much different strategies into the game of Survivor, and all of them have got some kind of um, some some juicy beef between each other on who's really the best out of them three because they've all been. Mm -hmm like heavily praised as the goats of American survivors. I think they're all wanting that title on, I took up boss and Rob and Parvati, or I took up Sandra and Rob, you know, so. Yeah, Kuna, you had yeah. a really good theory prior to hitting record in regards to why Boston Rob maybe didn't make the cut. And it wasn't just because him and CT maybe would have been uh, too hard to understand because they would have been <laughs> doing their own thing with the Boston twang if they were talking on Boston. the show. There would have been just too much Bostonness going on. And, um, you know, CT is kind of like the Boston Rob of the challenge. And you couldn't have the Boston Rob of the challenge and the Boston Rob of Survivor on the same season. But you had a bigger theory in regards to why you think maybe he didn't make it on the show this time. Yeah, I don't, I mean, it's not based on any sort of fact. But I, looking through the list, 
like we saw it sort of come out yesterday, like, oh, Boston Rob. I know, yeah, I, I, you pointed out Boston Rob didn't make the fight. I didn't even clock originally because I just had him in my head from yesterday that he was in. Um, but yeah. I thought, similar to what I was saying before, like they've gone really hard. They've kind of gotten the goats from Survivor. They've gotten the ghosts from the challenge. And if this season goes, like if season three, season four, where do you go from there? Like, especially in the challenge ranks or, I mean, the survivor ranks with, with Sandra off the list, with Boston Rob off the list, with Parvati off the list, Ceri's done, done it last season. You know, you got, you got a Tony, you got a few other, a few others that can say, certainly team, play, but. Team TV, baby. You got to get yeah, Tony Vlacos on. Yeah, of course, but. You gotta save. You gotta yeah. save a couple of you know bullets in the chamber just so you can take your shots later Russell on. Russell Hans, do you reckon Russell Hans gets the call maybe one day? Or is he a little I mean, bit too he's... controversial for Peacock? Yeah, he's probably a little, like, and I think it's part like his his game is very obvious, and I don't know in the traders. This is a different game, isn't it? It is. And I'm wondering if the personality that drives that game uh, is as adaptable to a game like the traders, or he would just be like too gung ho. Like, what if he throws someone's socks in the fire and they're like, this is not Survivor, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it'd be funny. Yeah, I, it would be funny. I, 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 I would enjoy they're it. Saving. They're saving Boston Rob for another season. Yeah, they, they blew the budget on all the, the, the all stars. And you know that Boston Rob would have given his appearance fee and it would have been up there um probably to make an appearance on the season. So maybe they're saving that for next season. Who knows? Maybe if we're lucky. We get three traders at the end. We won't spoil anything for people who haven't seen that outcome before. And they can afford to have Boston Rob on next season. But let's read this article that came out on today. Um, and it came out today. They said, you know, ready for some more backstabbing. They released the full cast. And there's a few people here that I don't know. So Trader Season 2, who's going to be on it? We've got Carsten Berge Bergeson from Love Island, USA. Known to viewers as Bergie, Carsten Bergeson appeared in Season 5 of Love Island USA, which premiered in July. Per EW, he worked as a Dairy Queen manager and previously described himself as a hopeless romantic, ready to give his heart to the woman of his dreams. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be the show for him, uh, Kahuna. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you're maybe the one person that would know something about Love Island. You look like someone that maybe would check out Love Island <laughs> casually sometimes, but... I, I mean, know that Mucky, Mucky's not the most successful when it comes to the Love Island stuff. So, <laughs> so I, I wouldn't go for go to him for any of these romantic dating shows, you know. And I can say that Mucky, you and me, we're in the same boat. Okay. Now, Love Island's barred for me ever since my re my application got rejected. <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm not I'm not aware of Love Island USA <laughs> at all. Um, I just. I mean, someone who works at Dairy Queen saying they're a hopeless romantic ready to give his heart to a woman of his dreams is not what I would consider traitors material or faithfulness. Or maybe considering the last season of Traders Australia, season two, he could be a good fit for the faithful, maybe. <laughs> yeah. In fairness, in fairness, we, we don't know any of these people that come from Love Island. So, you know, maybe there is a player within him, you know. I don't know how good yeah. of a player he was on Love Island. You know, was he a player player or was he just, you know, not that good? We'll, we'll find out, I think, this season. Now, this person here, CT, today did him absolutely dirty with this picture, man. There's so many good pictures of CT out there. He's been on so many seasons of the challenge that they could have chosen from. But they chose the one picture where he looks like a homeless person. And let's not forget <laughs> that this guy is the second most successful player on challenge history right so he's one of he's seen as one of the two goats a lot of people argue yeah. that he's the goat of the challenge right so uh ct tamborello is no stranger to reality tv he first appeared on real world world paris which by the way poverty nearly got casted on and then last minute i think there was like something where she had to pull out but she was going to be on his real world world paris season before survivor and then obviously she went on to survivor and became a legend so finally ct and poverty who are both now single which could be a good oh. thing for both of them oh are going to be on the same season um, in, a, in a reality you TV show. You do want to watch Love Island. You do want to watch Love Island. I just, sure. want poverty, I just want poverty <laughs> to be happy, Kuna. You know, I feel like poverty deserves it. And I also I reckon, feel like CT I deserves it. you could it. make her happy, Chris. You could definitely make her happy. Uh, listen, I feel like I could, but um, <laughs> I don't know if poverty's going to agree with that. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, they say shoot for the stars, and then if you don't reach it, at least where do you land? You land, like, you land on the moon land on the moon there you go so yeah. <laughs> you never know you never know you know at the end of the day ct great casting choice 
Um, he's really good with the physical stuff, but I think a lot of the times, Kahuna, people forget that CT is also good at the social game. They forget about that because how many seasons he's, has he gone on to where he's the biggest target and people don't throw him into anything because they're scared to go up against him or he becomes like, you know, he reinvents himself. Like he's become Uncle CT in recent seasons. Yeah. He's become the, the fun uncle everybody wants to hang around with as he's become the older person on the seasons that he's played in. He's got a, a really good sort of one-two punch in that he is intimidating for physical challenges, which doesn't really apply to the traders as far as no. being solo or one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but as far as um, being able to help the team get silver bars or whatever they have in the U is it silver bars in the US as well? Um, I forget now. I think so, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, obviously he'll be able to dominate those those physical challenges, but his other side is that he's incredibly sociable he's he's a fun smart likable guy and he can fly under the radar a little bit like despite being a target he's often not targeted not just because of the intimidation factor but because he's he's kind of switzerland he doesn't take sides in the house when there's big divides he isn't often like even though he is the vet of all vets and kind of gets labeled with that he's not in with the vacation lines from the challenge as much and can kind of float between and, and be the guy that everyone goes to, like you said, Uncle CT. And the thing that's underestimated about CT as well, because of his physical prowess, he's incredibly smart, maths wise, very smart, puzzles, yeah, very good. And I think if it wasn't one of the, this, there's probably a few people in this cast coming up where if it wasn't for the fact that they may be an obvious pick, like we thought Luke Toki would be in Australia, I think he'd be a great trader, honestly. I think he'd be a great trader as well. And I think that he could play it down to the point where people wouldn't think he's a trader. And like you said, people will underestimate him because a lot of people don't even realize how smart yeah. this guy is. He's such an all-rounder when it comes to reality TV. So happy to see CT coming to the season. Now, this next guy, allow me a moment to fanboy. Um, you know, Dan Giesling is one of my top five favorite reality TV players of all time. I never, ever thought that I was going to see Dan back on our screens again. He's become a very successful Twitch streamer. He probably loses more money by walking away from Twitch for the two weeks that they're going to record than what he stands to gain by winning this. So um, I, I feel like he's taking a risk. And for a long time, he he didn't want to leave doing the Twitch stuff to come back and play in another uh, Big Brother season. But, you know, the first season that he played, he's a Big Brother champion. Magnificent. Lost all of his allies very early on in the game. Had to reinvent himself two or three times in that season. Play the underdog. Win his way from the back up by very, very good strategy and great social skills. And then came back for an all-star season with only three other players that were returning players. There were four captains, which he was one of them, coming back into a Big Brother season as the biggest threat. People were already saying that this guy's the GOAT. He's the best ever play. I always debated between him and Will Kirby, who's another top five reality TV player of mine that I love. And he's such a big fan of Will Kirby. He actually took Will K Kirby's game and added to it when he came back onto the show um, and to play. But, you know, Dan, at the end of the day, came back and dominated Big Brother twice. There's not many people who can say that they've done that. He didn't win the second time because he was a previous winner and people held that against him, but he played the best game. And, um, you know, I think that Dan... If he's not a trader, it's going to be an absolute waste of bringing Dan back because this guy has got the ability to be a trader and for people to think he's a trader and still like he could be what Sam was in Big, uh, uh, Traders Australia, where he will make people believe he's not a trader even when it's obvious. Like Sam has got nothing compared to what Dan can do when it comes to manipulation. So, so happy to see this guy. I know both of... Kahuna and Maki, you probably don't know who Dan is, right? So I don't know if you want to move on from him. Only by reputation, from what I've heard, as soon as I saw him cast, the internet went off. Like, they they were so Legendary. excited. Can't believe that he's going to be on. So, yeah, no, I've not seen it. But from everything I've seen, just people spewing his praises, I he's got a, he's got a lot of hype and a lot to yeah. live up to in my eyes because well, so many people that I trust have said it. Even if he comes back, and flops out because he's got so like I would argue his reputation is the equivalent and and even it's bigger than Sandra's because a lot of people still doubt Sandra's two wins. No one mm. doubts Dan's credentials. Like the right. guy was dominant. It's like Tony Vlakos coming in to play the game. It's that level of reputation that he's bringing with him. So I feel like even if he flops out, it does not taint his legacy whatsoever. This guy is 
god tier and will always be and and for those that only watch traders and say oh well why didn't he do well there they're missing the point they need to go watch the original seasons that he's played in this guy is amazing so happy to see him come into the season this next fella um is deontay wilder known as the bronze bomber deontay wilder is the accomplished heavyweight boxer wilder has also showed off his athletic prowess in beijing olympics in 2008 and took home a bronze medal he seems like he should be casted on the challenge to be honest kona He'd be much better on the show. He's a beast. He is huge. He was, um, he was in a, a feud or not a feud, but a, a, I think it was a trio of match or maybe two big time, like against uh, Anthony Joshua, who is the mm. world heavyweight champion. So he's at the peak of boxing, uh, or was he? Kind of had a couple of losses, and people started doubting his the mental side, the killer instinct, the mamba mentality. And now he's applying it to the traders. So we'll see. But if 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 the knock on him is definitely not physical, but maybe that he doesn't have that killer instinct, we'll see how it yeah. sort of applies to a show like the traders. It's, it's fascinating. But um, even then, oh, sorry to go back. Um, there was a player on Traders New Zealand. His name was Kings, and even he d didn't have the the killer instinct. I guess you can say. You know, well, one of his opening lines in the season was, "Oh, my mum told me not to lie." And Paul Henry said, "Well, your mum isn't here, is she?" So, yeah. <laughs> but 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 Kings brought so much entertainment with just like scrambling, scrambling gameplay. Obviously, he wasn't a mastermind of the season, but mm. with just the entertainment he brought on, not not being a mastermind, you know, he made a couple of mistakes here and there, strategic wise. So that just adds all the fun to the game, right? And I feel like sometimes people who you don't expect to be strategic. Like one of my favorite players in Trace. Well, I just want to add, I just want to add to that boxing coming from like obviously I've never done anything at Olympic level, but coming from a karate background, having competed in karate growing up, uh, there is so much mental work that goes into fighting that people don't even mm. realize. You know, it is setting people up for a trap so you can counter. Um, and boxing is no different in regards to that. He would have some sort of a strategic mind. It's just can he apply that to the game of traders that's one of going to be the big question about him but to achieve at the level that he's achieved clearly he's a competitive guy so um i'm hoping that it's it's going to be better than i think it was locky that we had in season one who was an olympic swimmer didn't really add much to traders season one in us so i hope it's ryan, better than that right ryan lochte though was renowned and and mocked relentlessly for being like a dumb guy like he's he had things like Saturday Night Live. He was on Saturday Night Live after winning gold medals and stuff. He was very very famous, and he's just he just comes across as yeah like a a dopey nice guy. Um, he was not cut out for sure. I don't think he Deontay Wilder has that same uh, reputation at all. For sure. Let's move on to this next person. It's going to be Ekin. Good luck, Chris. Good luck. Sukul Kuloglu. <laughs> go you we try. We all got to give it a go. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not going to be entertaining. But Ekin found <laughs> remains on season eight of Love Island, but recently broke up with her beau, David St. Clementi. Per US Weekly, the couple won't, uh, won the reality dating show, dated less than a year. So again, another Love Island person. I don't think there's much we can add unless one of you two want to jump in and say something. I mean, uh, she's recently single. Cool, 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 there you go, Maki. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> this next person, um, again, we're talking legends here in this season. Janelle, three-time Big Brother player. The powerful blonde Barbie, the original Barbie from Big Brother. She's someone that is a challenge beast. Would have been phenomenal at the challenge if she was like in her prime. Uh, but she played most of her seasons, I believe in the early 2000s to early 2010s. And then sort of came back in All-Stars 2 to be the first player to play in All-Stars 1 and All-Stars 2. And All-Stars 2 for her and Big Brother didn't go as well as her previous two outings playing the game. But both first seasons that she played, she went very deep into the game. She was physically really good. Strategically, she was very sound. Um, so I'm very excited to see what she can bring. She's also done The Amazing Race as well with Brittany Hayes, um, another uh, player from Big Brother as well. So a lot of people are freaking out about having her in this season as well. Her and Dan Giesling, two very good friends as well. They overlapped on one of the seasons that actually now to think about it, she may be like a four-time player. <laughs> season six, seven, and 22. So there you go. Seven, se season six, seven, 14, and 22. She's a four-time player. Wow. And she also played with Dan. So uh, a lot of experience 
uh, five different shows she's been on for reality TV. I'm excited to see what she can bring to this season from both a challenge standpoint, because she's going to bring it, but also just to see socially and strategically how she's going to do. And she's very vocal as well, which I really, really enjoy. She's going to be good TV is all I can say in regards to having her on this season. Um, I know you guys don't watch it. So we're going to move on to the next person here, Johnny Bananas. Uh, give us a little bit of an intro on Bananas. Why is Bananas of any significance, Kahuna, coming into this season? So we mentioned CT as being one of the goats of the challenge. This is the other one. This is the seven-time champion. Ring, fingers full of rings from his championships um, on the challenge. He's arguably the goat because he has the most number of championships. He's physical. He's smart. He's social, like in that... Similar to CT, he should be a target every single season. But for some reason, whether it's his smile, I don't know. But he kind of gets by. A lot of that is on the strength of his networking and that he's got friends around him and he insulates himself well. And there are seasons where he can't do that because everyone's out to get him. And then he relies on his physical and he can actually get through eliminations. He can get through challenges. And if you get him to the end, he wins. But that doesn't necessarily translate to the traders however i do think like he he's come out and said on recent seasons of the challenge like you said chris that he doesn't stab you in the back he'll stab you in the front mm. and discussing before the podcast you said i think he's full of shit because he'll do whatever he needs to do and yeah. that's the type of attitude he has he stabbed someone in the did back did he tell sarah rice did he tell yeah. her beforehand he was gonna steal the money in the challenge no he just cold-heartedly, Mucky, went to the final with this girl. He did the whole season with her. She's his dear partner. And at the end, because he had a better individual time, he could decide if he wanted to share the winnings for that season with her or not. And he stole all of it. So she got nothing after going through the ringer with him for a whole season. It was that's hilarious why, to watch. That's, uh, you why, that's why I personally trust oranges more than bananas you know so <laughs> <laughs> there you go hashtag trust the oranges on hashtag the oranges oranges. What, what? he's also <laughs> going to be on house of villains coming up as well so really? he, he could have yeah he, he's got the he, and he's hosted on he's hosted his own shows on tv he's been on yeah. uh he's got that America's producer's mindset Cook. yeah he knows what he's doing as far as creating good television, and I think we're going to see it a lot this season. Yeah, I'm so excited to see Bananas. Um, if he's a trader or not a trader, he's that kind of person who will play both parts of the season really well. doesn't matter if he's going to be a trader or not. Uh, the next person is going to be John Burko. John Burko might be a newcomer to reality to you, but he's noteworthy in his own right. Burko is the UK Parliament's former House of Commons speaker. I know that Andre Lee freaked out about this guy being on um the show and i don't know anything about him i've got zero i don't know if any of you two zero. yeah you don't follow follow the uk politics either do you mucky uh he looks like the guy from the hunger game i wanted to say you but... kind of look like boris mate like you know the previous uh, prime minister of the uk if you if you don't follow politics um i don't but the fact you think i'm a prime minister oh that that really blesses my heart chris Thank i didn't you. say no, you had to smart. i said you look i said you looked <laughs> like him <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I've got a secret identical twin. Who knows? <laughs> um, yeah, zero right, move, on this guy. Let's move on to the next one. Now, this one here, Kevin Kreider from Blink Empire. It's from a Netflix reality show called Blink Empire. And um, confession time here from me. This is one of my guilty pleasures. I actually quite like uh -huh. Blink Empire. So I watch it, I watch it uh, pretty casually. I think there's been two seasons so far. And Kevin is the playboy of that season. So he's the one that normally goes out. He's 37, 38, um, still single, playing the field. I think it's in LA that they shoot it normally. And it's kind of like a Kardashians type of show with very famous and rich Asians in um, the US. I have to say, I I've got no idea how he's going to translate to the show. Like, uh, it kind of feels like a little bit of a left field choice to bring him in. Hopefully he does well because I really like him in Bling Empire. He's one of the more tolerant cast members from that season. <laughs> I don't know why I watch it because sometimes you're just like, what are these people on about? Um, because they're, they're about really that, obnoxious, yeah. rich people. But I think it's because he he doesn't come from that wealth. He doesn't come from that generational wealth. He's actually a bit of an outsider in the group where other people have got like so much money and 
can be full of themselves quite a bit. He's sleeping his way to the top, is he? Yeah, you could probably say that. <laughs> you know, maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe he got in touch with the right producer to get on the show. Like, um, but yeah, he's like the most normal one out of the group, I would say. So it's interesting that they chose him. But don't know how he's going to do this season. Happy to see him on it. Moving on to the next one, I think this is somebody that you know, right, um, Kona La- Larissa Pippen. I'm excited, not because I know anything about the Real Housewives of Miami. Let me just put that out there. But that last mm. name, Pippen. She uh, dated her, Scotty Pippen, right? Her, her ex-husband, Scotty Pippen, is one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Top 50 NBA player, original 992 Dream Team. They have a son together named Scotty Pippen Jr. Larsa hooked up with her son's teammate, which is what? always <laughs> a Spicy. fun thing. Yeah, like the age difference there at all. But I, it means also that that guy, Mal- Malik Bees, he can always say to Scotty Pippen Jr., hey, I... Yeah. Did stuff with your mum, like always hold that over him. You know what I mean? Like it reminds me of Jada Pinkett and um Will Smith. Yeah. And that exactly. whole situation. Yeah. And then to make this even better, again, I don't know anything with Desperate Housewives. The next contestant, Chris, if you scroll down a little bit. Yep. His last name is Marcus Jordan. That is mm. Michael Jordan's son. Okay. I did not know that. That's that's pretty cool. That is Michael Jordan's son, who Larsa Pippen is currently dating. No ways. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Oh, man. I mean, so, I was... hats off to her. Hats off. Like, she's doing yeah. it right. There's always been, like, a bit of a thing, like, my, Jordan and Pippen, Michael and Scotty, Scotty to Michael, like, the greatest duo in the history of basketball. But there's always been a thing of, like, Scotty thinks that he may have been better than Jordan if Jordan wasn't there, right? And Jordan knows that he's Michael freaking Jordan. And I just love that maybe, I just think a little conspiracy theory in the back of my head, Michael Jordan said, Marcus, I want you to go after Scotty's wife because then I beat him. My son, my baby boy is sleeping with your wife, Scotty. I win. That's Michael Jordan's like crazy. Has Scotty suddenly become... As he's suddenly become a lot more quiet since this has happened. I'm sure he's not in the media as often anymore, spouting his things around. (laughs) Uh, I don't know. I haven't watched the show. I don't know her personally. I know that history. And for someone to go leaving Scotty Pippen to go out with a son's teammate and then later go with that's savage. Michael Jordan's son is so insane. So I don't know what that's going to mean for the show. But just that little sordid history brings like giggles to my heart. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just that want to cool. say, just while we're on the subject, that she is my preseason winner pick. Oh, she's I'm, already I'm, won in the yeah. game of life. Let's be honest. Like she, she doesn't has. need to win. She doesn't need to win the show. Like her just doing what she's done. Like she's doing it right. <laughs> she's she's going down the line. Um, I would be if I was Marcus Jordan. I'd be worried about like you know LeBron James's son after this. You know, like <laughs> I feel like you know a couple of years from now she might trade him and for, move on, for yeah. LeBron James's son. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next person here, Maxim. I'm not going to even try and pronounce that last time. Dancing with the Stars. So Maxim rose to fame as a professional dancer on Dancing with the Stars. He's now married to his co-star, fellow dancer Peta, and the couple has two children. Uh, doesn't tell you much. Being on Dancing with the Stars, being an instructor, maybe he'll have a lot of patience. And let's be honest, Kuna, he's going to need it, having to deal with Bananas and some of the other sort of celebrities that are playing in this season because there's some really high maintenance people on the season so maybe that that patience as being a coach a dancing instructor will come in handy yeah it could apply to some of the challenges as well perhaps balance and coordination is often important so yeah mm. he's probably a fit guy too i'm assuming like you know i have no idea i'm just basically you know general he just he needs to he needs to apply the liam strategy and just become friends with the traitor and then he'll find us himself in the finals. He'll probably yeah, make it to Liam the final. Didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> That's I know. Not a strategy. <laughs> Moving on to the next one here, we've got Mercedes MJ Javert from Shars of Sunset. Bravo fans will recognize Mercedes MJ Javert from reality series Shars of Sunset. Her love story of her husband Tommy Faye was followed on by popular show, and the couple recently celebrated their fifth anniversary. I've got nothing on this. Um, let's move on to someone that we do know. And this is the reason I know Mucky has been silently sitting in the corner waiting to finally have an opportunity to bring I his finally knowledge. I know someone. I know yeah, you're, someone. You're, oh finally, you're useful. You're useful. Finally, yeah, Mucky, no. tell us what, 
Why, why is poverty so important? And why is this such a big deal that we're seeing her on this new traitors season? I mean, she's, you know, you look at the Mount Rushmore of US Survivor and poverty is, you know, rock solid on there, right? You know, she's played four times. Um, I feel like her first and her last performance was, you know, arguably the, the worst performances she had. But even then, for winners at war, you know, I feel like she had no shock. She had, you know, a big target on her back, especially with all the old schoolers going out pre-merge. But I feel like this is going to be massive, you know, where Survivor and Traders are a very different game. Even the bigger, I just want to there. add, the, the reason she had no chance in that last season is she ran into real-life friends that were playing yeah. the game together and Wendell and Nick and Michelle, right? So mm. she had no chance to penetrate that because this was an outside-of-the-game relationship that came into play. Um, yeah. And also, she she just had, I believe, her baby daughter not that long ago. So she was a yeah. new mother. We know for some people that takes a little bit of time to get that cutthroatness back. But it's been a couple of years now since mm. Winners at War. So I feel like she's mentally probably in the right space coming into the season, Mucky. Yeah, and, you know, she's best well-known as a flirt. She's single now, you know, so I'm, I'm sure she's not afraid to let that sort of side of her out there. Um, yeah, she's very strategic, as we all know. And I think she's going to do quite well. I think she's going to struggle because of the whole idea of that, you know, because in Survivor, everyone is afraid of the all-female alliance because mm. of what Pavi did in Micronesia. So I feel like that stigma is always going to follow her everywhere, no matter what show she goes on to. So I think she's going to have a wee bit of a hard time because of that because you do know, you think that these other people things. watch survivor do you think they know about survivor well there's a certain someone on the cast which still one of we'll the biggest debates bit. one of the biggest debates still in survivor who do you have history. your money on who do you have your money on is poverty going to outlast sandra or is sandra going to get one over poverty because we know there's this big beef between the two of them coming into yeah. the season think, it's going to be good who do you think i think poverty's going to outlast sandra this time Ooh, I, I, I think really the do. other way. I reckon Sandra is going to school poverty this season. I reckon Sandra has just got too much experience. And um, I also think sure. Sandra, like, she really knows how to play with that threat level. We spoke about it in previous podcasts where the more she plays, the more impressive she gets because she owns her status as a queen, as the queen of Survivor, which poverty is also a queen, but she's not the queen of Survivor, which is where the, mm. the whole battle came in, Kona. Who do you have? tiebreaker here who do you have do you think it's a sandra or a poverty win this season i think like we talked about uh you you said have has anyone watched survivor like i don't think bling empire love island all that i don't think they've they're diehard fans of survivor and what about recognize... marcus jordan do you reckon he watches it <laughs> i wouldn't i wouldn't <laughs> think so um but i do think between the two of them i think sandra might be more recognizable um just because mm. of the 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 two win thing and being the queen and ha and has been on other versions. I don't know if that translates at all, but it's a new and show. Also Sandra, it's a, it, there's no, there's no home between, ground advantage. Sorry. I just wanted to add also between the two of them, Sandra is the one I think that is the most in touch with the online reality TV community. Like she mm -hmm. goes to hearts of reality. She hangs out with a lot of people that are from, I think the reality realm of TV where I don't know if poverty does. Like I feel like poverty for a couple of years disappeared to her own thing where Sandra is really locked in. Like I would say she's got a very good chance of knowing some of these people, but one of the exciting things about poverty playing this game is that poverty has been rumored a few times to almost make the jump onto the challenge. She's been in the casting process a few mm. times where just timing didn't work out. And she's now going to get the opportunity to play with, a couple of challenges this season as well. So it could be interesting if there is a bit of a connection there, potentially because of that casting process. We spoke about CT and her nearly being on the same real world season. So uh, maybe there is a few connections that poverty can pull on and maybe she relates to some of those people a little bit easier than Sandra. And, and that could be a risky call, but I still have Sandra just by a little bit. I like to yeah. imagine that, the when putting a cast together, the producers will ask very pointed and specific questions. Do you know about Survivor? What's your history of this? Do you know this person? Have you heard of that person? And I'm hoping that that can help inform who they pick as traders because everything about the traders, the way the format works, I think it comes down to the cast. And do you have capable, competent, smart traders? And on the other side, capable, smart, faithful, because we saw very recently what it's like when you don't. 
and the traders can really run run rampant and dominate. So if they decide that this cast does not know enough about a Sandra Parvati to say they can't possibly be traders because they would instantly just be assumed to be, then they may get a shot in and both like really manipulate their way through this game, which we know they're more than capable of. What I want to yeah. see and what we need for everybody in Survivor to be happy, because I kind of feel like, you know, when mom and mom is fighting and we the kids had to sort out the issues right now, that's what's happening with poverty and Sandra fighting. So what I feel like traders need to be the marriage counselor in this situation and give us what the fans want. Put poverty and Sandra both in the traders camp, force them to work together this season or to try and mend some of those broken bridges between the two of them because all will be well and our dear little mucky, my younger brother, will be able to sleep soundly at night knowing that poverty and Sandra has become best mates again, mucky. Is that what you're hoping for here as well? Do we hope that we see both of them, you know, mom and mom making up and, and working together this season? I think, I mean, I, I'm someone who loves like the idea of the battle of the Titans, right? The best going against the best, right? And so I would personally love to see both of them as traders, but they're both gun for each other, you know, similar they to... Um, would. yeah. Yeah, they definitely will. But I'd love to see, you know, <laughs> that sort of epic battle happen, see who really, you know, can put themselves at the top. Because I think both of them can be equally matched because it was very close between Parvati and Sandra on who was going to win heroes versus villains. And, you know, even though Sandra has proven herself time and time again, she's never made the merge again since coming back, right? And, to, I mean, to be fair, neither has Parvati since when it, since Heroes vs. Villains. But I mm. feel like, yeah, they're both equally matched, like, you know, strategically and socially. It would be really great to see who can finally, like, take that badge of I outplayed this legend, right? So, yeah. yeah. but I don't think it'll change anything. In Survivor, sure. you know, for instance, I think yeah. that in Survivor, Sandra will always have the bragging rights, even though love poverty as well. Like, um, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see what she can do this season. Let's move on to the next one here. Peppermint from RuPaul's Drag Race. Kahuna, what do you have for us? She better work. Sashay <laughs> away. <laughs> Gotta work it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't know. Watch it, so I, don't... I, I, I watched early seasons. That's why I know that phrase. And I had a, I used to work with a guy whose name is Rupain, and every time he walked past my desk, I'd say Rupaul Rupain's drag race star. And then yeah, and if he'd ask me a question, I'd give it to him and then say, "You better work," and just throw Rupaul references. That's the only extent I have. So I would do that. But um, I don't know. Peppermint. I'm like she's a performer. Obviously, used to you know covering herself in different disguises, etc. Um, it's a persona. I'm interested to see what they would be like outside of that. And if in a house like the traders where you're living there, waking up and having breakfast and all that, is it full drag all the time? And how does that prevent people from connecting with you or assuming that you're not giving your real identity or can, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm interested to see how the persona plays out in a show like the traders. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the next one here, we've got Peter Weber, the Bachelor, similar to Mucky. Uh, what do you think, mm, Mucky, you know, as you know uh, as an eligible Bachelor over there in New Zealand? Um, what do you think of seeing a Bachelor making it over onto the show? Well, as the Bachelor of Pack and Save Cleanliness, um, I can say, <laughs> I can say there's a lot of key social skills that goes into the Bachelor, right? You know, you've got mm. all all these different people coming at you, so it's like, how do you socially how do you fight them just, all? Yeah, exactly. How do you fight them off? How do you socially <laughs> adapt between one beautiful lady life. to another? Yeah, oh, yeah it with really the stick, is fair mate. With the stick, get away. <laughs> <laughs> back off, back off. We, we no, won't, no, we no. won't name, we won't name names. But we, we had some, some, some interesting DMs um, in the night coming through to Mucky. You know, so he's, he, yeah, there, there is a strong with Mucky. You know, there is a strong. <laughs> you know, the Rizla, the Rizla of Oz, right here. Yo, if I was, if I was ever on Australian Survive and they had those dramatic <laughs> titles, mine better be the Rizzola of Pack and Save Cleanliness. <laughs> For those that are in America don't know what Pack and Save is, it's like a big supermarket, basically. So, yeah. you know, Mucky works yeah. in the in the meat section. So he's a lot of the times when they when they look at him, they just see a piece of meat. <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of my greatest weaknesses. Good reason. As, With as good reason. <laughs> No, but um, I mean, I I'm excited to see a Bachelor come and play. I feel like there sometimes is strategy in the Bachelor, but it's just not 
mm. strategic strategy if that kind of makes sense right because you do need to have a good social game to weave your way around people because people do get upset people do get jealous um my stepmom watches the bachelor all the time so sometimes when i come around i watch the episodes um with her and you know i do find it quite funny how one guy's able to socially adapt himself to all these different people everyone's got these different lives and personalities so he or you know obviously there's the bachelorette as well so he and she has to um match their personalities with the other people to see who they like who they don't like and yeah so i think this guy's going to be quite social um throughout which the social game and traders is the most important i would say out of all 100%. aspects so yeah I, I reckon he's going to do quite well yeah i like that moving on to the next one here we've yeah. got uh phaedra parks from real housewives of atlanta phaedra parks started in the real housewives of atlanta from 2010 to 2017 she now dabbles in several projects on her instagram page she describes herself as an attorney to the stars mommy mortician model actress and author so wow. uh, a bit of a slashy uh Kuna, when we look at that yeah. she's got a lot of different things that she does i mean who doesn't need an attorney who is also a mortician you know what i mean mm. like that is <laughs> fascinating yep as far as being a multi-hyphen i've never seen that particular combination of words put together in a sentence before so i have known nothing about her um i know that i think real housewives are the biggest faction in the house. So yeah. if we're talking about survivors teaming up, we want to see Sandra and Poverty or other challenges going to stick together. I mean, real housewives are going to dominate on numbers. <laughs> like, so if they can figure that out and vote together, if none of them are actually traders or whatever, it could actually go well. So who knows, especially if she's an attorney, mortician, model, actress, author. Yeah. Moving on to the last person here, or no, not the last yet, but uh, moving on to the next person here, Sandra Diaz Twine from Survivor, uh, one of the two goats of Survivor, two time winner, and my winner pick for Traitors wow. this year as well. I think wow. that, um, yeah, I think Sandra is made for the Traitors. I reckon this is going to be a season. The only fear that I have, Kuna, is her spiciness. Like we've seen it if somebody yeah. crosses her. Will she be short-tempered? But this is an older, more matured Sandra now that have played even in Australia. Like, I have to back her because she played an Australian survivor. You know, she came over here, showed some love to this franchise, brought her daughter, introduced us to Nina Twine, who also became an all-star in Australian survivor. And I was very impressed with that season when she came in because mm. she should have been the first person out, being a two-time champion, coming into the game, how she was able to let people sort of forget about it for a period there where they wanted to work with her in the game it was very impressive to see. So it does depend on if she becomes a trader or not, but I reckon if Sandra is given the trader mantle, seeing how well it went for Sari last year, I feel like Sandra has got the tools in her toolkit to do really, really well this season, but it does come down to, does she become a trader or is she just one of the people there? Because if she's not a trader, then I would vote like all the big stars. I would be like, Dan's got to go. Sandra's got to go. Anyone that's good at reading people and that can figure this out needs to go. I take the Bachelor guy to the end. I take Kevin from Bling Empire to the end. I take Marcus Jordan to the end. I take the people that I don't think is going to be strategic. That's the flaw of traders, right, Kuna? Yeah. You, you want, yeah, absolutely. You want the big stars out early. Yeah, you got to target the anyone that can pick your game. If if they're not a trader, then you, I mean, you want to know how influential she is uh, on a show like Survivor, the the grandfather of reality competition shows. She was picked for uh, Island of the Idols, right? Was that was that the season where she was yeah. the mentor with Rob, like, and uh, to be the person to to pick as the the legend of the game to mentor a whole team, and just another example of how completely influential she would be. You mentioned before, Chris, that CT's photo looking mm. like a homeless Wolverine. Sandra gets a photo from 25 years ago. Well, she made sure. <laughs> she, she's like, you, you better, you better respect, you know. Yeah. I don't want the, I don't want current day photos. I want photos when I was young yeah. <laughs> looking a lot different. So the example of it's just always things go right for Sandra. There you go. <laughs> queen stays queen, Mucky. Queen says queen. Yes. Slay. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really excited to see Sandra come back. And I think you're right. I think Traders is more up Sandra's alley than probably Survivor. But something There's no sit-out there. bench. There's no sit-out yeah, bench. There's no sit-out bench. And, but, you know, something to give Sandra credit for an Australian Survivor as well. Something that you mentioned, Chris. She should yeah. have been first on vote out because not only is she a two-time winner, 
the Australian survivor is extremely physical compared to the other survivors. And yeah. Sandra, who's most well known for not doing well at challenges, mm. participated at every challenge and mm. is most and like she still made it, you know, pretty decently far. So she's definitely yeah. got a great social game, got great strategy. Um, yeah, I, I I hope she goes really far. I Plus, really let's do. not forget she's a she's a voice of the fans. She wanted no yeah. part of Edge of Extinction. She was like, screw this twist. I'm out. This is not part of Survivor. Yay, yay. No, calm the farm there, Chris. Edge of Extinction <laughs> is... Ah, uh, let's is get him out of here. Man. Like, was it, you said you were only here for 30 minutes. All right, that's it. Mucky's <laughs> gone for the rest of the podcast. Let's continue on here. Are you going to behave, Mucky? <laughs> no, Edge of Extinction is a good twist. Okay. <laughs> Oh man, no, Jeff Probst yeah. is going to be on your phone real quick to get you in for Survivor 46 or 47. Oh, hang um, on, I'm getting, I'm getting a call. Uh, hello, Jeff Probst. <laughs> is that on your Shane Blackberry rock? <laughs> what? All right, the next Wait. person here, Cherie Whitfield from Real Housewives of Atlanta. Don't know anything about her. I believe it's still uh, might be. No, we've still got a few people here. Per Instagram page, Cherie Whitfield holds a lot of titles, including mother, author, designer, fitness enthusiast. That's good for her. Entrepreneur, executive producer, and television personality. So she's got quite a bit going on, quite a lot of experience by the looks of it. Um, on that, you it's know, just a though, shame. I don't watch any of Real uh, Real Housewives. When when the, the website that covers this stuff is trying to put forward a case and all it can do is pull what you wrote in your Instagram description. That's that's not a great sign. You know what I mean? Like Ouch. if you're just going off their own Instagram description as to what can we, how can we hype this person up on a web, on our website? So we get views and you're just using her own description from Instagram. Probably a finalist, probably a finalist. Let's be honest. Yeah, could be. <laughs> probably, probably making it deep in the game. <laughs> um, moving on to the next one here, Tamara Judd's The Real Housewives of Orange County. Um, as a star of The Real Housewives of Orange County, Tamara Judge has learned all about keeping her friends close and her enemies closer after leaving the show for two years. Judge returned for season 17, which premiered in June. Again, don't know much, but as Maki said, oranges over banana. So who knows? Maybe exactly. Tamara will be able to do it. <laughs> Again, they have the numbers and they'll be good at like, I want to see at the round table if there's a glass of water anywhere near them. Because you know, in, in the discussion, someone's getting splashed in the face if they are like Real Housewives style. Yeah, well, Kuna, you've got the mic, and I believe this last person you know better than even myself. I know Trishel from the Challenge All Stars. I saw her play in All Stars when she came back, but because I wasn't an original Challenge fan in those early years, I haven't seen all of the earlier seasons that she did play in. But I do know that she's got a bit of a reputation on the challenge. Some people love her, some people hate her. So it's a bit of a controversial figure. Well, an example of her reputation is that her name is Trishel, but is mm. often referred to as Trashel, as in that she's mm. trashy. Um, she was the, the she hooked very... up with Leonardo, didn't she? Yeah, she. She. I mean. <laughs> I think the everyone has. Even, it's... even Mucky has. Even Mucky has. Hey, so, I told you. Mucky's 21, so he counts. <laughs> <laughs> Mucky's 21. It's all right with Leo. <laughs> Not 26 yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tr Trishel um, is one of the sort of OGs, like very popular people from the um, – the challenge but it was from a time when it was more focused on the drama and the fights that she would get in and she would get very drunk which would then lead to the fights and then all the hookups and all that sort of thing um as far as competing itself on the show she was never really like in the vein of a cara marie or a laurel or anything but she's more famous for the drama that she brings and the character as opposed to her actual prowess for a show like the challenge so I don't know. I don't know how it translates to the traders. She didn't necessarily show her ability to keep things under wraps. She was very vocal, very out there, and always spoke, spoke her mind, which drove the fights and stuff. So, probably a finalist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <There you> <laughs> probably Absolutely. someone you want to drag with you to the end, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. So there we have it. That's that's the cast. That's the full cast here for Traitors US Season 2 and our original sort of takes on where we think things are going to go. Uh, the biggest thing that I got out of that last little bit there from you talking about Trishel is I hope Traitors Season 3 phones my girl Cara Maria. Where's Cara Maria on this season? We need to get her on for Traitors well, we, Season we 3. We did hear Tori was actually annoyed because she asked if she could go on it and was not mm. invited. And then Corey... 
um, said that he was asked for season one. Yeah. Um, but couldn't go. B and M or MTV said no, you can't go. And then he didn't get a call up for season two. So he's like, you know, did did MTV do me dirty here when they're mm. now calling on challenge people when I was already in the mix? And Tori said, I put my hand up too. What's going on with that? Like, first of all, the entitlement from Tori to think she would automatically just because she said <laughs> yes. Um, but interesting that and you were I mean, heartbroken I think, about Corey, right? You were heartbroken that Corey's not on the season. Yeah. Well. I mean, of all the things Corey could go on, I don't think traders would match him very well. Like he would suck at this. <laughs> so, Kahuna, he, man, he I'm, telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I, I, I admit, like we had Andrea Lee, you know, really gutted that Corey didn't make it on on Twitter, and I tweeted out that you know Kahuna's crying in a corner, and he's like, Kahuna's not a fan. And I'm like, nope. He wants to take him on in a hall brawl. He reckons he I don't can want beat to him in a hall brawl. <laughs> no, I, just, I just mean that because I would literally be impossible to pick up and move. I would just lay there until he died from from tired, tiredness. He, he's not lifting up 180 kilos, man. There's no Peacock. way. Like, I get Peacock, stuck in let's, the hall. let's get this battle going. Give Kahuna the BK a call and put Corey on season three with him for traders. We want to see this beef resolved on the, the biggest stage. Uh, in the trader season itself. But this was a lot of fun to talk to both of you about this upcoming cast. Just a little bit of bonus content for everybody that has subscribed to the channel over the last couple of weeks. Please consider subscribing because there's plenty more content to come in the future. Hit the like, put the notification bell on. Uh, within the next week or so, we're going to have Traders New Zealand interview dropping that Maki did his very own first interview so look out for that we've potentially got two traders australia interviews lined up so just trying to get the clear for that as well so um some more more great stuff coming we've got a survivor of african player i am having a chat with over this weekend that's going to drop soon as well and some special previous players potentially lined up for some coverage for survivor 45 as we cover the season as well but for now that's it catch you guys next time bye